So I just showed the group the trailer for the movie that's coming out, everything, everywhere, all at once. And as soon as I saw it, I knew I wanted to do a video on it. It's definitely a movie about superposition and the potential implications of that. Now, most people don't know what superposition is, but many people these days have heard of what's called the multiverse. And superposition in physics is the infinite possibilities that exist. And from that, there's been many different interpretations the greatest minds of the world have considered, what the quantum physics concept of superposition implies, that there have to be multiple universes, okay, or a multiverse, that there's a, a potentially infinite number of other variations of this universe, and with that comes potentially an infinite number of versions of each one of us. And this movie is very clearly about that, and it seems fascinating, I can't wait to see it. But I've only watched the trailer, so I'm only gonna comment on a couple of the lines from the trailer, and then explain and tighten up for everyone the uh, idea of what superposition is and what it really implies and how we can use it spiritually. And that's the point of it ultimately. Um, it's interesting to think about there's another universe in which I can dunk a basketball, for example, okay? Or another universe in which I have hair. I mean, we could think that way, but that's really not the point of it, nor is that specifically true, okay? And I'm gonna explain that using Pac-Man in a minute. But let's go through a couple of the, uh, the, the lines from the trailer. The universe is so much bigger than you realize. Okay, well that smacks of John 14, 2, in which Jesus says, my father's house has many rooms. Okay, this universe isn't a universe. It is a multiverse. There's many variations of it. Packaged all together, you could say that's many rooms. Okay, and if this is the father's house, it has many variations of it. And it's in the same house. But we can't see that, it's hard to see. Faith helps a little bit to try to understand what that means, but how to apply that is really what a lot of um, spirituality is all about. But that's superposition, infinite possibilities, and the universe is much bigger than we think. It's not just this one place, there's so much more to it. Then uh, a line in the movie says, across the multiverse, because that's spot on true, there's a multiverse, I've seen thousands of Evelyns. Evelyn is the main character in the movie. And her husband says that to her, at least a version of her husband, as I understand that trailer, is seeing her and says, I've seen thousands of Evelyns. Now here's where the issue uh, comes into play, where most people that, when they talk about the multiverse and that there's universes and you're in other universes as well, we often think of them as conscious beings of us in other universes. Like there's literally a Steve walking around somewhere in some other universe who's quite literally playing basketball right now and he's just as conscious as I am, okay? And that there might be an infinite number of those. And that's dizzying for people, like, really? How could that be? How could there be 10,000s of me? And why am I stuck in this one and I'd rather be in those universes? Well, you can get in those universes, but it's not the way that they imply. The fact is that there's only one conscious Steve and you're looking at him right here. Now there's an infinite number of other Steves, but to understand that is to understand this Pac-Man example, okay? So, Almost everyone I know knows Pac-Man. I hope you understand how video games work. Pac-Man's very simple, and I'm just, I just drew one line of it, okay? Here's Pac-Man. I'm not sure Pac-Man has an eye, but it felt right to put it on there. There's Pac-Man. These are the little cookies that he eats. There's a cherry. That's a reward. And then there's the ghost, the scary things to stay away from. Now, whoever designed Pac-Man years ago, what is it now, 40 years ago or so, whoever designed that game designed all of the variations at the start in the game, right? All the different things Pac-Man could do is part of the code of the game Pac-Man. There's an infinite number of things Pac-Man could do in that game. And at the start of the game, there's, I think, a barrier at the top of the bottom of Pac-Man. He can't go up or down, but he could go left or right. And so superposition is the potential for Pac-Man to go left or right. It's in the code of the game. He could go right towards the ghosts. He could go left towards the cherries. Both pathways exist at the start of the game, okay? And then there's an infinite number of variations after that. He could go eat one cookie, then go back and eat this cookie. He could go, you know, right up to the ghost and turn around and run away. He could go get the cherry, then go down, get the cherry, go up. All of those variations exist at the beginning of the game. And yet, there's just one Pac-Man. There's a bunch of other potential Pac-Mans, okay? There could be a Pac-Man that goes right when the other one goes left. That one existed, but that's not a conscious Pac-Man. And so there's another universe in which I'm raising my right hand right now instead of my left, right? And so 
if I, uh, if I think that there's another universe in which there's a conscious Steve raising his right hand, that would be off the mark. The fact is I could have raised my right hand first, but I didn't, I raised my left. Basic idea. Now there's another universe in which I perhaps practiced basketball a lot more when I was a kid, and I would perhaps be in the NBA, probably not, but that probability must exist. And so there's an infinite number of potential pathways my, my life could have gone. But that does not mean that there's a universe in which there's a conscious Steve dunking right now in the NBA, okay? Just like Pac-Man could be in a bunch of different places, there's still just one Pac-Man. Conscious choice, while you're playing the game, keeps them in one of those variations. And all of those other ones exist within the framework of the game Pac-Man. Well, superposition is the infinite number of variations of the world that we're living in. They all exist right here, right now. And I could be in another universe um, doing something else, but as soon as I'm in that universe, I'm not in this one anymore. I have one consciousness, one soul, if you will, and it goes with me. It travels with me throughout the multiverse. And every time I slip into another one, the version that I was just in, in physics terms, it would be called collapsing the wave function. I'm now no longer in that universe, okay? It's just potentials. I could slide through the door uh, right now, you know, pushing my chair back. I could. There's a pathway in which that exists. I'm choosing not to. And yet that pathway existed. See, that's superposition. That doesn't mean there's a conscious Steve outside that door right now sitting in a chair, okay? So in the movie, he says, and I think this is brilliant, and this is where it becomes really spiritual. Every rejection, every disappointment has led you here to this moment, See, the world that we're living in is a bunch of potential physical yous, and you're experiencing one of them. And it's Pac-Man. Every time Pac-Man makes a choice that makes him get closer to the ghosts and the ghosts hit him, what happens to poor little Pac-Man? Right, he dies. He has a ne negative experience. What if he consciously chooses to go towards the cherry? Then he gets rewarded. Well, that's our universe. That's our multiverse. Every time you make a conscious choice, that is somehow negative for your development spiritually, like say resenting someone or being impatient or being um, abnormally or out of balance fearful, right? Judgmental, shame, guilt, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we head towards those ghosts because we get pain. And when we have those types of doubts, negative emotions, and just all that negative energy, if, we, if, we will, if you will, and we repeat that again and again, we're very bad at Pac-Man, okay? And we don't do such a good job in that game. But what if we made a conscious choice to go in a different direction? Well, if we go in a different direction and I make a conscious choice to say, uh, forgive or be more patient or develop wisdom or practice the possibility I'm actually not Steve, I'm a spiritual being in a system that includes superposition and it's my consciousness floating through this system and then up appears this thing called Steve, which is verse 51 of the Tao. The way connects all living beings to their source. It springs into existence, unconscious, perfect, and free. Takes on a physical body and then lets circumstances complete it. Hey, that's Pac-Man. Okay? He's a being that's connected to the source. You sitting on the couch playing Pac-Man, right? And then circumstances complete it. If you want to get better at it, every time you do something bad in the game, there's a negative consequence. Whenever you do something good, you get rewarded. You can feel that. Well, that's our physical life. When we make conscious choices to move in the direction of our, the greater good for self and others, love another as oneself, there's rewards that come with it. But when we don't make those choices, when we do the opposite of that, there's some sort of form of punishment that happens. See, conditions of our multiverse are completing us as well. I can vary paths into another version of this universe. And if I'm successful at it, I'm gonna get some of these cherries. But if I make conscious choices and I hurt another or I judge another or I hurt myself or I judge myself or whatever, I'm going to get some sort of punishment. And so every rejection and every disappointment has led us to this moment. See, all of us are right where we need to be. All of us, the, 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 the complete karma of it, of it, if you will, is all the conscious choices you've made in your life that got you to this point means you're right where you need to be. But I'm currently not satisfied, right? I want to keep working on it. i got some work to do. And I have more conscious choices to make that, are, that help me uh, develop myself spiritually upcoming. And if I get good at that, focus, step six of the Eightfold Path, if I can stay focused on that, uh, I'll do a better job at catching the cherries. Each one of us, every single rejection and disappointment has led you to this point. What if you learn from those rejections and disappointments? 
Well, now you're going to be going after more cherries. Each one of us is eventually working on getting connected back to the source, right? The way connects all living being to their source. We are all connected to this divine energy, if you will, the Tao, the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it. We're all connected to that. And this lower self, the Steve self, is being guided around like Pac-Man in this multiverse. And if I can understand, you know, through all my physical experiences, like a feedback loop, that it's really not Steve, that there's a higher version of Steve, the Lord within ourselves, which we all have, the Christ within each one of us, if we can do that, then all of a sudden we master the game. I'm reminded of uh, Gary Zukov's excellent book, The Dancing Wooly Masters, which, as I understand it, Wooly is patterns of organic energy, and we are that. This is organic, and I'm a pattern of energy because I'm condi my conditioned self, for, for example, is speaking English. You know, that's a pattern. And uh, I'm truly the energy behind, of it, behind all of it, and you guys are dancing with me. All of us are doing this throughout the world. Well, the goal is to be a master of that and to dance with each other's patterns of organic energy, to dance in a, in a way that is cherry-inducing, if you will, okay? So all the mistakes that we make end up leading back to pathways that include learning, and it's the essence of Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good for those who love God. Well, what's that line? you got to love God, which means the spiritual self. That's it. doesn't mean a dude in the throne in the sky that's going to judge you if you did something bad. It's not that at all. We have to upgrade our understanding of God into what it says in Scripture. God is love. Now, I think most people agree. If love is the guiding force, then every time I'm not love-based, I have an, a, a ghost experience. But every time I'm love-based, I have a cherry-inducing experience. Okay? Don't let anything detract you from it. Don't let anything distract you from it. Okay? Well, that's what I was just talking about. It, love, God, Christ, Buddha nature, the Tao, whatever you want to call it, don't let anything distract you from it. See, the multiverse has a ton of distractions in it. But if you stay focused, and you're focused purely on the cherries of the world, which is the spirit, okay? If you stay focused on that, you won't get distracted. One of the prophets, I'm not sure which one, calls it again the, uh, the, the delusion, uh, the swamp that's a uh, delusion of ignorance. And we fall into that swamp when we get distracted. By what? The multiverse and all its various forms and all the various characters in it. But if we stay focused on the one thing that we're supposed to be doing, the it in that sentence is the love. Uh, religion means to reconnect. We're supposed to be reconnecting to that divine love. There's nothing else that's supposed to be done. And there's a gazillion other things you could do. Rumi, the poet, tells the story of the, the man that the king sent into the kingdom to get the one thing. And if he gets that one thing, he's done everything. But if he goes into the kingdom and he does a million other things, but he doesn't do that one thing, he will have utterly failed. And Rumi says, what is that one thing? It's to reconnect with your divine nature. So what have we got? We are spiritual beings having a physical experience. That physical experience is superposition, okay? It's the, it's the infinite variations the inf infinite potential use and potential me's out there. Your spiritual self is having a, a, a interaction with all those variations. You're only experiencing one at a time. But if you shift your focus, your consciousness, your intention towards love, you'll pop into another universe. That variation was there for you too. But the one you were just in collapses and it's gone. Okay? So there's not a million variations of you. There's just one. And if we keep following that, if we follow that path towards the light, towards the love, like Jesus says, if your eye is single, your whole body will be filled with light. That's the game we're playing. And there's a million different ways you could go through this multiverse, okay? In the trailer, they put one of those little um, toy eyeballs here, and they put it right there, the third eye. And that's the third eye that Jesus is referring to when he says your eye is single. Single eye, not these two physical focused eyes, the third eye. And this thing sees the spiritual world. And if you see only the spiritual world, your whole body is filled with light. And that's the game we're playing in. There's a million variations of it. My father's house has many rooms. And there's so many different directions we can all go. But we're dancing together. We're all just patterns of organic energy dancing together. And if we manage to stay focused together on the spirit, we're going to win this game.